At some point with the injuries at linebacker, you haven't gotten any better at the position. Call up Landon Collins, put your ego and your pride aside. You didn't do that. So for me, I'm at the point now with Ron, I've run out of patience because, I, and I told you guys this probably like two months ago before we got on the win streak with Heineke, that for me with Ron Rivera, he is a guy that is stuck in the past. He thinks he can win games 17 to 15, and control the clock and time of possession. Points win games, time of possession doesn't. Okay, that's a tool that you use to score points to win games. But time of possession doesn't win you the game. We had a we had a twelve play a twelve minute twenty one play ninety six yard drive and we still lost the game, as that was our only touchdown of the afternoon. Like time of possession doesn't mean a damn thing if you're not scoring points. If we don't score points, and to me that's the fault of the coaching staff, specifically Scott Turner, who was awful today, because Wentz shows up. And all of a sudden now, we strictly are going from the gut. Our best run plays are from under center, counters, traps, um, wham blocks coming across the formation, um, slow developing runs, but you know, you get inside and it's fourth and one, and we're gonna run a toss with Jonathan Williams. Like that, you, we're, we're killing the, the Browns going north with Brian Robinson. And on fourth and one, Robinson's been out the last two plays, so the whole excuse of, oh, he's tired. He ran onto the field initially. Then you guys told him to come off the field. You leave Williams in there, and you run a toss on fourth and one. Again, situationally, this guy just doesn't get it. For whatever reason, he's, he's lacking in the awareness that is necessary to be successful consistently in this league. It's so frustrating as a fan to watch this. And because of that, knowing that Ron is so stubborn and bullheaded, you got to fire Ron because he's too loyal to the guys that are also bringing him down. But Ron is not innocent in all of this because this team wasn't ready today. Just like the team wasn't ready in week 15 coming off of a bye week to beat the Giants at home. The team wasn't ready then. The team wasn't ready today. And that's a reflection of the head coach. This team was flat all day long. I mean, the Browns came out and they were moving the football and then they had the penalty and the sack and then the, the, that drive blew up, right? Now we get the football offensively and Wentz throws a pick. The defense is able to stop them, hold them to a field goal. It's 3 nothing. At that point, there should be a sense of urgency. Hey, look, I need you to get your shit together. I get it. You don't want guys looking over their shoulder and yo-yoing them in and out of the lineup, but there needed to be a sense of urgency today about the meaning of this game, controlling the outcome of the season, knowing that you just needed to win your final two games. You don't need anybody else's help. And I'm done with the playoffs. We don't, I don't even want to go to the playoffs now with the way we're playing football. Like I, I said this, I think it was Thursday, Friday show, one of the two, I said, it, it doesn't really bode well for a team that's making a quarterback switch in, in week number 17. Like, that's not a good thing, you know, to be making a switch this late in the season. And I also said a couple of things that I was like, man, these are some bad omens. The Browns, I told you, were win one, lose one, win one, lose one with Watson. I said, well, this is the one that they're supposed to win. They won. I said teams were 0-13 oh this season after playing the 49ers, okay, the following week. So no team has played the 49ers and then the following week won a game. I said, that's not good. And, and we, we now make it 0-14. So that's a hell of a stat right there. And so I said all of that to say this. Um, Ron made the decision to put us in this position by going out, trading for Carson Wentz. He, he, he told everyone that that was his decision. When everybody said, oh, you wanted Jimmy Garoppolo. And then he goes all ape shit on everybody and to remind them that that was his decision, that he watched all the tape, that he was the one that did all the Okay, that's fine. Well, you have to uh, lie in the bed now because that was your decision that you made sure everyone knew. Adamantly, you made sure that everyone knew that that was your decision. So now you've made your bed. You've got to lie in it. So that's a mistake. It cost us four players that could have helped this team win this season, or you could have spent that money on the offensive line because clearly Andrew Norwell and – Trey Turner weren't it. You uh, never addressed cornerback. You never addressed linebacker. These are mistakes that you made in the game. $28 million could have gone a long way in helping you address that, but you could have also addressed that in the draft. And you didn't. Okay, you could have addressed that with some undrafted players. You didn't. You, you never addressed 
linebacker or cornerback aggressively enough, and it cost us this year. This this run defense wasn't good enough down the stretch of the season. The cornerback play wasn't good enough, especially with the injury to Juice. We already came into the season saying, this is when we had William Jackson the third. We couldn't afford any injuries in the secondary. Well, he got traded, and then Vich, uh, uh, Juice got hurt. So you're really thin in the secondary. No Cam Curl means this defense is going to struggle. You've seen that all year long. The man's missed four games, all four games. We haven't had good defensive performances. So that speaks volumes as to the importance of Cam Curl uh, in this defensive lineup. But it, it shouldn't come down to one guy. Jonathan Allen gets hurt. That hurt us big in this game. But that, it, it, that doesn't matter because – we weren't ready. We weren't prepared to go out and beat a six and nine Cleveland Browns. We weren't, and that's a reflection of Ron Rivera and this staff. Jack Del Rio didn't do a good enough job of making uh, Deshaun Watson uncomfortable. Once he got into a rhythm, first of all, we couldn't sack him. I mean, we, we hit him, and and he's bouncing off of dudes like he's got grease all over him or something. Like dudes, what are we doing? Tackle this man. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it, it was a farce. It was it was tough to watch, but you know. This is Ron Rivera. This is who he is as a coach. This is what this team is. And I think he's plateaued. I don't think he can get any better. And I don't want him or his staff, you know, choosing the next quarterback here. I don't want them to be involved in that process. I would just like to move on because I, I sincerely think Ron Rivera is stuck in the 20, you know, teens. He's stuck in the, the, the 1990s. He does, I don't think him or Jack Del Rio have done enough. And, 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 and less, lesser, uh, to that point, you know, lesser degree Jack, because I think Jack is working with the pieces he's been given. He hasn't been given a lot defensively after the, the defensive line. He hasn't been given a lot to work with. And so you're, you're asking Jack to be aggressive. I, but even in that, the blitzes that Jack draws up are horrible blitzes. And they're coming from too far away. We don't, I don't think we're a good blitz team. And I think that's a reflection of Jack Del Rio again. I just think the whole staff is accountable for this team, you know, not winning 10 games this season. We, we should have won 10 games. This schedule, we should be losing to the Cleveland Browns at home. We should not be losing one game to the Giants and tying the Giants. We're a better team than that. We shouldn't have lost to Tennessee earlier this season. Like, we shouldn't be sitting where we're sitting right now at 7-8-1, but we are because this team is poorly coached. 